Hey everybody and welcome back for another video on Learn, Build, Teach. Today we're going to take a look at using version control in Visual Studio Code. So let's go ahead and dive right in. Alright, so I'm starting here on uh, just a resource that you guys can use. It's straight from the Visual Studio Code docs uh, and it's uh, docs slash editor slash version control. And they come through and uh, this just think of this as kind of an extra resource that you guys can look at um, after this video because I'm going to kind of walk through a lot of the things that they cover but they might have a few things that maybe make a little more sense or show a few things that I don't cover. So just think of this as kind of a backup go-to resource on the actual Visual Studio Code docs. Uh, so in this video I'm, I'm going to assume that you guys have at least a, a basic understanding of Git and what version control is so I'm not going to cover not going to cover what Git is or really how it works. I'm going to I'm going to really focus on how it works inside of Visual Studio Code. So I'm starting here with a blank project, um, a Git uh, Git test folder, and uh, let's say I want to initialize this as a Git directory or a Git uh, repository. Let me open up the terminal here. And if I were if I were to start this as a um, as a Git repository in the command line, I would have to come in and type Git init. Not a whole lot of work, but I still have to have a command line open. In Visual Studio Code, you can actually come over to the, the source control tab here. And if you click on the little version control icon, if you hover, it says initialize repository. So I'm gonna go ahead and initialize the repository that we're in. And notice that that's gonna go ahead and create our, that's gonna go ahead and create our .git directory. So this is, we can see that it's actually a Git repository. And you can see here that we've got no changes. Well, we'll come back to this in a second, but for now we've got no changes. So let's come over to our files. Let's create, let's say, an index.html. And if we come back and look at source control, now we can see that we've got, uh, we've got one file that's been changed. And you can see that the uh, U is untracked, so we, we're not tracking this file yet. So if we wanted to say, hey, we want to track this file, we can go ahead and stage this. So we can stage it, and now it's underneath our stage, not under changes. And then we can commit with a message, let's say, added index.html page. And then uh, the checkbox up here, go ahead and commit that. So now we've got one commit in our Git uh, all through the, the Visual Studio Code GUI here. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna use an Emmet abbreviation to sub out HTML5 document and give this a Git uh, test title and just say H1, this is a, a Git test. All right, so we save this. And now we come in and we see our index HTML again in our changes and we see uh, not the U for untracked, but now the M for modified. So we can see that, that this file has actually been changed from what it was before. It's not that it's new or deleted. This is a, a file that's just been changed. So let's go ahead and uh, stage this. Let's give a message. So uh, created index HTML skeleton is what we'll do. And go ahead and commit that. All right, so let's say we're, we're working on a project and we're coming in and we're making a change and we want this to be uh, this is uh, an updated git test. So if you, if you notice here over in the gutter, you can see a little bit of uh, color over here. And let, let me undo what I had, come back to where we were. So now it went away. As soon as I make a change, I get the little blue thing over here that basically signifies to me that I've changed something on this file. And if I were to come in and let's say delete the title tag, if I delete here, you can see a little red uh, triangle signifying that I've deleted something. And if I come down to the bottom of the page and just start typing here, it's gonna pick this up as a new line and even the return characters here. So all of these greens are new lines. So I can, I can in this gutter see the lines that I've changed, the lines that I've deleted, and the lines that I've added. So let me, uh, let me get out of this. Uh, let me put an H2 here, something, something, I don't know. Let's save it. All right, so now we can see our file over here has been uh, changed again. And we can come in and add this and do an updated index again, whatever. And now again, if I come in and delete a line, I'll get the little red icon here. When I save it, I will be able to see here that it's been modified. If I double click on the file, and actually, I can actually get a diff. So I can get a diff of what my previous file was to what my file is now right inside of Visual Studio Code. Now this gets kind of challenging. I, I mean, this is kind of the problem with all diffs, uh, diff utilities, diff applications, is you want to make sure you have kind of a lot of space here to be able to see them side by side. Uh, I've got a big monitor, so I can see them pretty well. If you're on your laptop, no matter what you're doing, it's going to be kind of tough. But uh, we can come in here and we can see that uh, this is the change here. So this was deleted. 
All right, so if I had multiple different changes, I could use these arrows here to arrow through uh, the different changes. If I wanted to, if I'm doing kind of a merge, I could come in and I could I could copy this if it's something that I needed, and I could paste it in over here uh, to make them match. Uh, you can do all these sorts of things that you're used to with all your different diff utilities, uh, but typically it's kind of a combination of either you've got uh, some sort of separate GUI from your text editor or you're using the command line and that's kind of tough, but all this stuff is really just built right into Visual Studio Code. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna close this out, I'm gonna save this. So we've talked about um, you talked about the gutter over here to show where you've deleted things, where you've added them, and where you've modified them. Uh, I want you guys to notice that there's an icon here that shows you how many files you have that have changed. And if we come down to the bottom left, you can see which branch you're on as well. And you can also create a new branch. So if I want to create a test branch, and then come in here and say this is an updated git test from the uh, test branch, make sure that we know that, and save this. Now we can commit this specifically to that branch. So updated in test branch. All right. So go ahead and commit that. And now we can actually switch back to our main branch, our master branch, switch back here. And notice that this text is going to go away because we're going to come back to the master branch where we had not typed in what we just typed in. All right. And, and again, just switching between these is as easy as coming down to your branch here and then choosing. Uh, the branch that you want to work with. So again, in, in your normal workflow, you might have a separate GUI or you might be working in the command line, but I don't think any of that really touches on the simplicity of what you get here with having not only the command line built in, but also the, the Git and source control uh, built in as well with a lot of different visual cues to let you know right in your editor what files have changed, been modified, uh, lines that have been deleted, all that kind of stuff. So super, super powerful. Let's uh, let's come back to uh, the docs here. They also talk about having, they've got different plugins here. Git history is one where you can go back through, obviously, and look at your Git history, do a lot of stuff there. They've got some stuff for Visual, uh, Visual Studio Team Services and a couple of other ones. There's a couple of other um, different source control providers that you can look at. Uh, it talks about the Git support here. It talks about a lot of the things that we just talked about, including being able to, to clone packages, do branches like we did, adding tags, uh, connecting to a remote repository. So this is the ability to, let's take a look at this. Uh, we get uh, items in here to do push and pull and all this kind of stuff to a, um, to a central repository. So if you get this linked up with GitHub, you can take advantage of these uh, buttons right here in your editor to do all of your pushes, your pulls, if you need to get updates, all that kind of stuff you can do right on the editor. And I encourage you guys to just kind of play around and see all this stuff. And then they talk about the gutter indicators, uh, merge conflicts that you can look at, uh, viewing diffs, all these different things that you can do right inside of Visual Studio Code. I think it's gonna be really useful uh, for you guys. I think it, it kind of simplifies a lot of our workflow. It simplified mine, at least for basic stuff with Git. Um, and I use this within my kind of, uh, my, my workflow at home. Uh, we use something different at work, but for my workflow at home, this is, this is what I do. So it works out pretty well. Uh, so I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you, if you enjoyed the video, uh, like, subscribe, leave a comment below. Let me know how you feel. If you have any advice or things that you want to see, find me on Twitter at James Q Quick, and I hope to hear from you guys soon. But until then, I will see you guys in the next video.